and welcome to the Hive Live studio here at Vicarage Road, where today the club have very proudly hosted the FA Women's Continental Ties League Cup final uh, between Bristol City and the winners, Chelsea. Here to talk about the big occasion here at the home of the Hornets today, I'm joined by two Watford women's players in Helen Ward and Emma Beckett. So welcome, ladies, to the studio. Helen, I think you're a bit more of a familiar face to our Hive Live viewers, having appeared on the show a couple of times this season. So Emma, we'll come to you first and uh, yeah just tell us a bit about you and your time in a, a Watford shirt so far. Sure straight in the hot seat okay <laughs> I like it. Um, so this is my third time back uh, with the club I, I call it third time lucky. Um, I was originally with Watford I think maybe 12-13 years ago now um, where I first met Helen um, and at a return I'd say probably two years ago so now I'm enjoying my third stint in the club. Right, and a little birdie tells me uh, that you've got quite some talent when it comes to scoring long-range <laughs> goals. Is that right? Um, someone else's words, not mine. Um, <laughs> but I do have a bit of a gym for a goal from distance. I'll say right, that. and that's quite something actually coming from you, Helen, to recognise that talent with your goal scoring abilities yourself. <laughs> yeah, but I think all of my goals put together don't add up to the distance <laughs> between, <laughs> between the goal and the halfway line. So yeah, no, incredible talent. Um, I haven't actually been there to see it myself because I missed the game that he did it for Watford and I wasn't there when he did it against Watford. But, you know, I'm sure there'll be another one to come and I'll definitely be there for that one. Well, we're going to be talking more about your season, which will be effectively restarting soon with that FA Cup match in the not too distant future uh, but for now let's talk about today's big game here at Vicarage Road actually Helen it's been a massive weekend hasn't it mm. for Watford yeah fantastic I mean the way that the boys won yesterday in the, such dramatic fashion and with scoring direct from a free kick as well which is something to celebrate in itself um, and then yeah to host such a prestigious event here today has been fantastic so a really good weekend for the club yeah it feels like a really big moment for our club to be hosting an occasion like this would you agree Emma? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think it speaks volumes for women's football, the fact that we're actually at um, such a great ground such as Watford. Um, you know, that we were talking about how great the pitch looks. You know, it's immaculate. The fact that you've got a championship side playing so well and so frequently on it and, and you can also host something as, you know, as, as proud as a cup final. Yeah, I mean, you've used the word prestigious there to, to describe this competition. Where does the League Cup sit in women's football how much of a big occasion was that to have this here right on our home turf yeah i mean it's probably not as recognized as the fa cup um because obviously that's the oldest competition in, in football basically you know men's or women's um so that's obviously always been well thought of but in recent seasons this has become a real competition that the big sides want to win and i think the fact that only arsenal chelsea and man city have ever lifted this cup shows that they take it seriously mm. um, and, and I think Chelsea had only won it the first time last year and they clearly wanted to, to come back and get their hands on it again so I think it is, it's a competition that's definitely grown in stature. Um, fantastic to see another side in Bristol City getting here today especially they've, they've struggled a bit in the league so for them it was a, a really good achievement, disappointing for them on the day but you know Chelsea were fantastic out there so... You know, they obviously were here to win the trophy and nothing less. Yeah, they certainly enjoyed that that playing service, didn't they, Chelsea? Um, no fans in here today, which I think is the really it's a special ingredient when it comes to any kind of final. But even without the fans in here, it, it felt like it had a really special atmosphere, and it was still a massive occasion. Mm -hmm. I think I think you'd, you'd find it hard to disagree. You know, um, as I say, coming into such a great ground, you know, that boasts like the history that Watford does. You know, it's, it's anything that a player wants to be around, you know, everything a player wants to be around. You know, you could tell that even though it was against, you know, arguably a team that are towards the bottom of the league, Chelsea didn't take it for granted. You know, that I think they kind of set a precedent right off the bat. You know, was within three minutes, I think it was, they'd already scored, you know, and the same in the second half. Yeah. So I think as a player, you know, coming out onto a, you know, a ground and a, you know, on an occasion like this, it's, it's obviously only a win for women's football. Yeah, and I think one thing actually that speaks volumes about the facilities that we have here at Vicarage Road is that particularly Chelsea, you know, they're a team that's competing in the Champions League and the players when they were coming out on the pitch here, they were really soaking it up and taking it in. You know, I think they were very aware that they were a pretty nice big stadium here, uh, which, you know, have been hosting Premier League football for the last five years. Yeah, and you know, the ground's seen massive improvements over the last few years and I think, you know, it's certainly the the best it's ever looked since I've been a fan and, you know, the pitch in particular is you, it's unbelievable. You see on the T V so many grounds are struggling this year for some reason, but, but Watford's is up there with the best. I know it's won an award even in the Premier League with 
you know, some of the surfaces they've got. Um, so that's, you know, massive credit to the ground staff. I know he's very precious about his pitch, <laughs> um, but rightly so, because it is immaculate and that, that's all we want, especially a team like Chelsea, like you said, the way they play football, they, they've been able to zip it around on there, you know, no problem. And, and they would have loved, 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 loved that surface, no doubt. Well, we've talked about how special it was to host this cup final here today, but now let's see the highlights.
So Chelsea crown champions here today. They did beat Bristol City by six goals to nil in the end at Vicarage Road. And you've already touched on it, Helen. I think all of us perhaps slightly saw it coming in the sense that we knew the way that Chelsea play their football, they were really going to benefit from that playing surface. Is that what you sensed as well, Emma? I think so. Um, as someone that's watched Chelsea quite regularly, you know, um, during our time off over lockdown, um, they've been so rampant against teams. You know, they can uh, sort of interchange so many players amongst their squad. They can change um, anything from sort of top to bottom, if you like. Um, I think Hells and I spoke about it sort of pre-game. We said, you know, especially on the back of Bristol's result on Monday, uh, we're excited for quite a combative game, um, and unfortunately, it didn't quite take effect. Yeah, because going into this one, just to give some context in the WSL table, there is a bit of distance between these two sides. But it does seem as though things are slightly on the up for Bristol City. Uh, but unfortunately, it was it was the worst possible start for them, really. Ultimately, wasn't it to get concede that early goal? It was, and it was it was tough to watch, you know, because we've been there as players. You know, when you you concede early on, and you think, my goodness, this could be this could be a tough afternoon. And with the players that Chelsea have got, you know, they've got senior internationals over the all over the pitch. They've got probably three or four national team captains in their side. All of them can pass a ball. And like you said, when it's on a surface like that, with the, the big big pitch as well, let alone the actual, the, the, the playing surface, the size of it as well, they just opened up gaps all over the pitch and it was so difficult for, for Bristol to deal with. And they're a young side themselves. You know, their captain today, Gemma Evans, I think she's only 22 or 23. And so for her to be leading the back line, you know, I thought she did a fantastic job, but it was difficult for her. And, you know, with such an experience around her, it was, it was always likely to be a tough day for Bristol. Yeah, credit to them, though, Emma, because they huffed and puffed, didn't they? I don't think you necessarily saw heads drop too much, despite conceding the early goals. No, I think that's fair to say. Um, one thing from where we were sat, we noticed that um, Bristol were dropping off and the back line were giving Chelsea more and more space to come into. Um, and unfortunately for Chelsea, they will dominate that kind of space. They have the players that can either play in the short tight spaces or they can stretch the play and you know switch the ball out quite easily um, I think I was quite um, you know buoyed by how Bristol stepped out in the second half you know despite taking like, an early sort of goal against them um, they were able to kind of garner some chances of their own I think they had some quite good saves from the Chelsea keeper to, to kind of keep the score as it is but yeah um, mm. I was impressed that they kind of stepped up and you know, despite everything, despite the result, you could see like a good attitude about them. And I think that's one thing that Matt Beard has brought to the team. Yeah, he's relatively new in the manager's job there, isn't he? And I suppose they might just come away from today and just try and focus on what achievement it is to even get to this stage in the competition and, you know, set yourself up with a game like that. Yeah, certainly. It was almost a free hit for them. Their priority is going to be staying in the Super League this season. And, you know, in recent weeks, their performances and their results have really improved. And Matt's come in and I think he's, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to play under him and he's definitely the type of manager that, that gets a squad together and gets you believing. Um, and that's, that's what he's done at Bristol. And as I said, today was, was kind of just a go out there and enjoy it. And, you know, it's, they knew it was going to be tough um, and it turned out to be that way. But hopefully it doesn't have too much of an impact on their, their season going forward. They've got some really big games coming up. So I think if they take their attitude into those games, they should do OK. So having spoken in detail about the game, uh, Chelsea running out winners in this League Cup final at Vicarage Road, I think for our viewers here on Hive Live, we're all just really keen to know what next for Watford women. Um, so you're coming towards the end of this extended break, but you haven't got long, have you, Emma, to prepare for what is your next game in the FA Cup? No, some might not say long enough. Um, so we're due to go back to training on the 30th of this month, um, a long, long time overdue, uh, with our first game in the FA Cup on the 4th. Wow. So what we're talking, five days? How, mu how much, will you get two training sessions in there? Yeah, I think we're likely to get the Tuesday and the Thursday night um, training sessions and then, yeah, straight into it on the Sunday. But I suppose for you, Helen, you've been with London Bees, moonlighting. Um, <laughs> but for you, Emma, the majority of the squad, you've just had to keep yourself fit at home. Yeah, exactly. Um, obviously, I'm joining yourself and, and doing the virtual race with Team Watford at the moment. So that's, I mean, it's come at a real good time for me. But yeah, as you say, just uh, continuing as work yeah, um, as normal and, and trying to kind of squeeze in workouts on the side. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's going to be a big test for you all to come back together and have what, a couple of training sessions before you go into competitive game. But I suppose MK Don's your opposition in that cup game. They're in the same boat, right? Yeah. So everyone in, in, at this stage of the competition will have you know, had their seasons suspended since uh, New Year, basically. Um, so that is the, the only good thing is that everyone's in the same boat. Um, 
doesn't make it any easier because obviously you're still at risk of potential injuries. Hopefully that doesn't happen and, and we can get everyone can prepare as best they can on their own before coming into training for that week before before the game. But it's it, yeah, it's going to be testing, but you know it's it's what we've got to do and we you know we can't wait to get back on the pitch. So we're excited to do that in any means. Yeah, well hopefully you can pick up where you left off because things are going pretty well, weren't they, Emma? I think so. Um, <laughs> I think you could argue the same last year. You know, we're in the same kind of position uh, towards the top of the league um, with promotion being our number one goal. Um, you know, in terms of the super, um, going into the championship, we've you know put a bid forward as a club or two, um, but we very much appreciate that we need to do all the all that we can on the pitch. Yeah. So effectively, at the moment, you're in the third tier, looking to move up and go into the championship, which sits below the WSL, the top tier. Of women's football so yeah just tell us a little bit more about that this application has gone in yeah so each season um clubs in in tier three are invited to send in an application which basically proves that your club is in a position to to compete off the pitch essentially um in that division and be sustainable in terms of finances everything around the club that you don't really see when when you're sort of on the pitch or watching as a fan um so the likes of grace williams who was our gm and and everybody in in that sort of higher end of, of the club they've been working hard over uh, well probably the last 12 months because we submitted one last year as well which we, we believe was very good and we submitted one again this year so hopefully that puts us in a good position that if we do our, our job on the pitch then we'll, we'll hopefully be successful in, in trying to get up into the championship yeah so you have high hopes really because you've touched on it already emma um but this is two seasons now effectively you've been cut off when things have been going so well yeah, you said it. Um, it. It's, you know, kind of been demotivating to an extent, you know, when you're doing so well. Um, I think last year we stopped playing around February time and we hadn't dropped points in the league since September. You know, so we just won every game um, that was in the league up until that point and then to have it initially null and voided and then to, to be told that actually um, they're going to just cut the season there, you know, for like some of our players, you know, they've scored their first senior goal. Um, that was initially wiped out but again to kind of be in the same boat now you just have to be focused you have to be quite resolute um, and I think as, as certainly female players you are those things anyway yeah well thank you Helen Emma for joining us here in the Hive Live studio and what's been a really really proud day for the club hosting such a big occasion uh, the FA Women's Continental Ties League Cup Finals congratulations to the winners Chelsea but to both sides and we wish them both well for the rest of the season